It'll be a November to remember in high school football across the upstate. It always is five wins separating state squads from the big prize. The opening night of the playoffs on Friday night hits right now. I'm Mark Whiteman. Thanks as always for joining us. We kick off in 3A tonight. The Red Hurricanes and Woodruff Wolverines, young programs with new head coaches looking to keep their season rolling in our Sparrow Financial Game of the Week. Chase Justice has the highlights. Batten down the hatches. We've got a hurricane warning here in Piedmont as the Wren Golden Hurricanes play host to the Woodruff Wolverines for a chance to advance in the South Carolina high school football playoffs. Wren looking to advance past the first round for the first time since 2021, while Woodruff hopes to get back to the second round for the second straight season. Getting things started in the first, first drive for the Hurricanes, and Reese Price polishes off the drive with a five-yard score. Canes up seven to nothing. But the Wolverines would answer. They dial up the double reverse pass with freshman running back Aiden Gibson on the receiving end. Wolverines drive would end with a field goal to cut the lead down to four. Following a pair of touchdowns by both teams, we find ourselves with the Hurricanes leading by a score of 14 to 10. Junior quarterback Colton Bagwell connects with a wide open Carson Bryant on a busted coverage who handles the rest himself. Wren jumps ahead of 21 to 10. Later on in the half, TJ Morris finds Corey Motes who makes the contested grab in the end zone. Ball does pop out, but the refs say it's a catch. Wolverines now trail 21 to 17 and would be down 35 to 17 by halftime. And the Hurricanes wouldn't let up in the second half. Canes win final score 49 to 32. It just builds confidence. It's been a long time since we had that home playoff game and we won it. Um, just gonna enjoy this one on Monday and see what happens there. The Wren Hurricanes have officially advanced to the second round of the high school football playoffs and will face the winner of Traveler's Rest and D.W. Daniel. In Piedmont, I'm Chase Justice, WYFF News 4 Sports. Chase, thank you. Dorman and Burns have had their battles. The two powerhouses have split their last four meetings, but matching up in the postseason tonight for just the sixth time, their first since 2015. Played in mid-October in Duncan. That was a two-point Rebels win. Let's pick this game up in the second quarter. Burns, Trace, Segara. This kid is something else. 46 yards. He gets tripped up at the one-yard line. Burns would score on the very next play. They ties the game at 10. Under a minute to go in the half. Dorman trying to drive. Bryce O'Neill. Fumbles, Burns recovers at the one yard line and they would plunge it in on the very next play to take a 17-10 lead into half. They go on to get a big win, 44-17. to They will host Hillcrest next week. Gaffney's month-long win streak snapped last Friday with they hope will be another sustained run of wins starting against 7-3 Lexington. Opening kickoff, Gaffney's Amazon, Little John takes it 90 yards through the smoke and the fire and the flames we carry on to the house eight nothing gaffney after lexington ties it up gaffney's riley staten finds amazon again this kid is amazing the name is fitting 57 to 17 gaffney gets the big time win and they're moving on jail man hosting blythewood second straight postseason berth for the patriots had not done that since 2010 took a while to get going offensively but the man d ready from the jump big number 99 marquavis thomas living in the backfield blythewood playing at a shall we say ponderous pace still scoreless halfway through the second quarter first and goal on the inch line they go tush push but at the bottom of the pile jail man's max watt comes up for the ball officials eventually called a fumble recovery that sparks the patriots 44 to nothing they scored a bunch of points after we left man will host spartanburg next week the jackets are swarming teal hannah rolled to a region title their pursuit of a state title begins against fort mill and well underway when we arrived hannah leading 29 to 3. josh donald do your thing 20. Josh making his pops, Eric, who works here with us, awfully proud. 36 to three after that score. Now it's 39 to three, Fort Mill fumbles it away. Jalen Harrison going oppo, and that sets up Eli Hollinger to Josh Donald for another one. TLH firing on all cylinders, 53 to nine. It will take on the winner of Dutch Fork and Boiling Springs. Well, that score coming up in just a little bit. November is almost always the month of the Abbeville Panthers, the reigning 2A champs, the favorite to win a seventh title in nine seasons, beginning their playoff push tonight. Six straight wins to close the regular season, and they get going in the playoffs as Columbia visits. One of the great entrances in the upstate. Abbeville's got it to Marcus Leach. The give, no, the fake. Everyone falls for it. Jaden Baylor, wide open. Touchdown, Abbeville. The very next drive for the Panthers. It's going to be the give to Carson Norman. He's fighting and finishing with six, 46 to six. Abbeville gets a big win and they will host Newberry next week. 
Christchurch, our other defending champs, six straight wins to end the season, hosting one and nine Ridge Spring Mineta. The very first play from scrimmage for the Cavs. Tucker Hendricks hits action. Jackson rep, as the kids say, he's him. A 50-yard bomb on the Cavaliers' first offensive play. They're throwing it effectively, and they're doing the same on the ground. Deshaun Reeder, number nine. Watch out now. He's off. Cavs take a two-score lead, and they get a 49-0 win. They will host Mac B next Friday. What a season it's been for 96. Their best campaign since 2018. A home playoff game against Keenan. Second half here, Raiders leading 18-14. Braden Mitchell for 96 launches to the moon. Well, Darian Waldrop does not drop that one. Wildcats go on top 21-18. Final minutes of the game, Wildcats leading. Trying to kill the clock, but Zay King fumbles. So the Raiders have life, and they're going fourth and long. Just got to get a stop here. Keenan fourth and long under a minute to go. Camarion Smith rolls out. Slings it to time. McNeil keeps his feet inbound. A two-yard line, he's out, and they score on the goal line. Evan Artemius, a heartbreaking finish to a tremendous season for 96, 24 to 21. Let's show you a few scores from around the upstate. This game actually happened last night. Spartanburg beating Rock Hill 31 to 7. Clover beating Woodmont tonight 31 to 14. Hillcrest moving on 37 to 29 over Nation Ford. And in 4A, you also have Greenwood beating North Augusta 17-16. Northwestern over Lawrence at home 57 to zip. Eight area programs in the 4A playoff field. Westside with as good a chance as any to be the last team standing. The Rams lost in week zero. They have not lost since. Carrying a nine game win streak into their first round game against Airport. Let's show you the highlights. Nice start going for number 10. Cutter Woods going under center, plunging in. Rams leading 7 0 at the end of the first quarter, into the second quarter. And this is the explosiveness we've come to expect from Westside. Woods to Josh Williams, 45 yards into the good area. They would punch it in from there. Woods to Jamar Boston, Westside, 42 to nothing. They'll host the winner of York and Riverside. We'll have those highlights in just a moment. The autumn wind is a Red Raider. Greenville swaggering into the postseason after a strong October. South Aiken traveling to Serene. Mazio Bennett moving so fast, her camera wasn't ready in time. Takes a screen into the red zone, into the end zone. His third touchdown of the first half. Greenville at 56 0 at half, and they would score another touchdown in the second half for Shad Robinson to the corner store. The Raiders roll 63 7. They'll take on the winner of Greer and Indian Land. Coming up. Home playoff game for Riverside, hosting York, leading 13-7. York was in the second quarter. Aiden Davis punches it in from the six-yard line to put the Cougars up 19-7. Riverside would cut it closer, but the Cougars fend off Riverside 26-17, and they end the Warriors' season. York will play at Westside next week. All right, we're taking a quick time out on Friday Night Hits. Still a ton of football left to show you, but first, a special thanks to all those coaches and an official that wore a mic for us for this segment all year long. We don't want to bother when it's winter go home, so tonight, a best of mic'd up. Let's go, Key. Key, let's go. Pull the bottom of them out. Don't have them tough. You're letting them, you're letting them hem you all up and stuff like that because you got them little baby shoulder pads on. Whatever you got last year, I'm going to double it. I might triple it since you plugged it up right here. He got you back, baby. He got you back. Oh, that holly. <laughs> like you in the Pentecostal <laughs> church. Hey, we're three for three right now. Oh, no. Let's go. Y'all are playing so fantastic. Do you understand me? Yeah. Keep yeah. playing. Keep going. Thank you, ladies. Seven-time region champs Chapman at home hosting Crescent in the first round of the 3A playoffs. First quarter, Chapman's Mathai Scott. We've called this kid's name an awful lot this year. He takes the handoff and gets a little crease, and he's going to finish it off from there. 6-0 Panthers. Next possession, Coleman Gray going back to pass, chucking it up to Bennett Smith. A 54-yard score for Chapman. They get a 45-0 win over Crescent. They will host Chester next week. The Daniel Lions all business on the hunt for their third 3A title in four seasons after getting bounced in the playoffs last year by a single point. This year winning by an average of 40 every Friday, leading Blue Ridge 42 to nothing. Blue Ridge punting, but that ball is blocked, spinning. Tristan Carrington gathers it up, takes it in, gives the Lions a 49-0 advantage, and they're moving on 49-2 for the final there. They will host Wren next week. 
Greer went undefeated in region play, earning a first round home game against Indian Land. Kicking off to begin the game, Connor Frew for Indian Land takes the opening kick. He's got no real interest in being caught. Speed, you can see Indian Land scores first on the special teams play, but Greer would get it together. Chris Hall, the quarterback for the Yellow Jackets, connecting with Brock Diggins. Greer ties it up and they fight off Indian Land. 29 to 28, what a great win there for Greer. They will host Greenville next week. Region champion Clinton at home against Palmetto. Let's pick this game up right away. No score, opening quarter. Clinton's Taishawan Richardson sails the throw. Jaden Jenkins with the INT for Palmetto on the Mustangs. Would get moving on an offensive march, approaching the end zone. Brooks Jansen hits Ty J. Evans, touchdown Palmetto. They score first, but Clinton answers right back. Now leading 7-6, to six, Richardson going to throw it into triple coverage. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Caden Crawford grabs the deflection for another Clinton touchdown. They're moving on 42-18. to 18. Travelers rest traveling to Pendleton. Bulldogs a high-flying bunch. We got a scoreless game opening minutes. TR's Colby Epps, Drew McKibben head top and McKibben won't be caught. TR with an opening touchdown, seven nothing Devil Dogs. You know Pendleton would answer, and they do. Luke Gray is going to find Abijah Webb right here on a quick hitting slant. Webb's going to go the distance. The Bulldogs take a 12-7 lead, and they get a 41-16 win over TR. They'll play at BHP next week. The Broom Centurions haven't reached nine wins since 2005. That could change tonight if they could beat Seneca. Bit of a bus ride for the Bobcats all the way up to Spartanburg. This was probably the game of the night. Centurions trailing 28-21 in the third. Jalen McGill for Broom. What a special player he is. A 45-yard touchdown run that ties the game. Final minute of the fourth. Seneca's Camsley Campbell ties the game at 34. The extra point makes it 35-34 Seneca, but here comes Broom. 10 seconds left in the game, needing the go-ahead score. Kamaje Bracket Brandon finds a seam, and he's into the end zone from 30 yards out with four seconds left. Back and forth battle, and Broom wins it 42 to 35. They will play at Clinton next week. The St. Joe's Knights rank sixth in 1A, hosting seventh ranked Hunter Kennard Tyler, a 9-1 Trojans team tied at six in the second. Kate Alt chucking it to Jackson Campbell. Okay, I see you, nine. Knights take the lead. They would go for two. They would get the two, leading 14 to six at that jun juncture. And they hold off HKT 38 to 24. The Knights will play at Louisville next week. I'll show you a few more scores from around the area. Dutch Fork beating Boiling Springs 56 to seven. Fairfield Central also ending Liberty's tremendous season 48 to seven. In 2A, you've got Newberry moving on against Saluda 24 to 15. Strom Thurmond over Landrum 49 to seven. Great Collegiate beating Pillion. 62 to 0 in Chesney over Batesburg, Leesville, 21 to 10. That'll do it week one of Friday Night Football. Friday Night Hits is in the books. The playoffs are underway for Chase and our entire hardworking crew. Thanks as always for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Have a great weekend.